Hello everyone, welcome to Skills Build Training. My name is Kamran and in this video we are going to talk about the 15 things that you must do after installing Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a popular Linux distribution. It is based on Debian and latest stable version of Ubuntu is 20.04 at the time of this video creation. I have just installed my Ubuntu 20.04 operating system and let's see what are the 15 most important things to do on Ubuntu after installing it. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, the number one is to download and install the latest updates. This is the first thing that you should do after installing Ubuntu. Using the latest versions of the software help you to protect your system and it also keep us away from the bugs that can hinder the performance of your system. In order to download and install the latest updates in your Ubuntu system, first you have to open up your application menu and here you have to search for software updater application. Alright, so this is the software updater application, you have to click on that. It is now checking for the updates. So here you can see that the updated software is available for this computer and if you want to see the details of the updates you just have to simply click here and these are the details of the updated software. So after seeing the details you have to simply click on install now button and it has now started installing the new updates in your Ubuntu system. It requires authentication to install the updates. Simply enter your password and then you have to click on authenticate button. Alright, so all the updates are now downloaded and installed by the software updater application. So once all the updates are downloaded and installed, then you have to restart your system so that all the updates take place. And similarly, if you want to download and install the latest updates through the terminal or command line, then you have to open up your terminal by pressing Ctrl Alt T. And let me just zoom in this terminal by pressing Ctrl Shift and Plus button. And now in order to update the apt repository cache of your system you have to write on your terminal sudo apt update and hit enter the system is prompting for the sudo password so you have to enter your password here all right so the apt repository cache is now updated successfully and if you want to upgrade your existing packages through the terminal then you have to write on your terminal sudo apt upgrade and hit enter. Press Y here to continue upgrading your packages and hit enter. Alright, so all the existing packages are now updated. So that was the number one thing to do on your Jubantu system after installation. Alright, so the second most important thing to do after installing Ubuntu is to enable and disable the additional repositories. Every Ubuntu release have some built-in repositories but you might need to add some additional repositories that help you install many important software and updates. It also helps you to get the required functionality. After installing Ubuntu, you might find out that some of the repositories are disabled by default and you need to enable them. So to do so, you have to open the software and updates application through the application menu. So simply you have to click on the application menu and you have to search for software and updates application this is the software and updates application click on it all right so now you have to click on the other software tab you can see that we have two additional repositories here but they are disabled by default in order to enable it you simply have to click on this checkbox enter the password for the authentication and you have to click on authenticate and now you can see that this repository is now enabled and to disable it again you just simply have to click here and this repository is disabled now let's move on to our third next important thing to do after installing ubuntu that is installing the missing drivers although ubuntu automatically detect and install missing drivers on your system However, there might be some drivers like graphic card which you might need to download and install manually. 
if you have dedicated graphic card then you might need to download specific version of graphic drivers manually to play video games or carry out high-end tasks to check the detail of additional drivers you have to choose the software and updates application and you have to click on additional drivers tab all right so these are the available drivers for my ubuntu system if you have some graphic card installed then it will also list down the available drivers for that so after checking the detail of your available drivers you have to click on close the next and the fourth thing to do after installing ubuntu is to install multimedia codecs multimedia codecs help us to play the multimedia files like mp3 mp4 avi and many other popular formats some multimedia codecs are missing on ubuntu and are not installed during the ubuntu installation to install multimedia cortex simply you have to open up your terminal by pressing ctrl alt t and then you have to write on your terminal sudo apt install ubuntu hyphen restricted hyphen extras to continue installing the multimedia cortex on your ubuntu system you have to type y on the terminal and then hit enter on this screen, you will see the license agreement for the multimedia codex. You have to go through this license agreement and then you have to press OK. In order to install this package, you must accept the license terms. So if you accept the license term, then you have to select yes and hit enter. All right, all done, no errors, and multimedia codecs are successfully installed on my Ubuntu system. Now let's move on to the fifth important thing to do on Ubuntu after the installation, and that is installing the Genome Tweak tool. Ubuntu comes up with the beautiful themes and icons, but you can tweak Ubuntu and customize its look by using the Genome Tweak tool. By using this tool, you can change the themes, icon themes, extensions, background images, and many more. It does not come pre-installed on Ubuntu. So in order to install it, you have to write on your terminal sudo apt install genome-tweak-tool. All right, so press Y here and hit enter. All right, so the genome tweaks tool is successfully installed. Once it is installed, open up the application menu and search here for tweaks. All right, this is Genome Tweaks tool. Click on it. This is the dashboard screen of Tweaks tool. In order to update the themes on your Ubuntu system, you have to go to the Appearance tab. And here you can see that you can change the themes, cursor, icons, shell, and sound. Once you click on this list, it will show all the installed and available themes on Ubuntu. And you can select any theme. In order to install the extensions, you have to click here. And uh, similarly, you have got multiple options in this Tweaks tool that you can explore after installing it on your Ubuntu system. Now let's move on to our six important thing to do on Ubuntu after the installation and it is connect to your online account. You can connect to your Ubuntu account, Facebook, Microsoft and Google account. Simply for doing that you have to click on the application menu and search for the settings application. This is the settings application, click on it. All right, this is the settings application dashboard and you can see that on the left side we have got multiple options. Simply click on the online accounts, simply select the application. For example, I want to add my Google account and uh, I have to enter my email address here and uh, then I will add my password in the password field. And when I will hit enter, I will be connected to my online account. So the idea is that it is very important to connect to your online account so that you get the updates and the notifications on your Ubuntu system. The next important thing to do on your Ubuntu system is to set up your email account. The default email client of Ubuntu is Thunderbird, which comes pre-installed. It offers many advanced features such as speed, integrity, and privacy. To set up the email account, you just have to click on this Thunderbird application icon. All right, so the Thunderbird application is now opened here. You have to edit your name, and after that, you have to provide the email 
after that you have to add the password in the given field and then you have to click on continue it will verify your email account and it will be connected to the thunderbird you will be able to see your emails through the thunderbird you can send the emails through it you can get the notifications as well the next thing that we are going to discuss is to enable the firewall on your ubuntu system if we define firewall in a simple words then it is a network security system it monitors and controls the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules and protect your system. UFW is a default firewall for Ubuntu. It is a highly reliable firewall. UFW is disabled by default on the Ubuntu system as it protects our system. That's why it is very important to enable it. To enable the UFW firewall, you just have to simply open up your terminal again and you have to write on your terminal sudo UFW enable enter your password here and hit enter and you can see that it is written here the firewall is active and enabled on system startup so whenever you will start your system the firewall will be activated and it will start working to manage and control the firewall setting through the gui you can install the gufw tool with the command sudo apt install gufw and hit enter so the GUFW is successfully installed and now you can go to the application menu and you can explore about this tool. If you want to disable the firewall again, then you have to write on your terminal sudo UFW and disable. When you will hit enter, it will be disabled on your Ubuntu system. So that is how you can enable the firewall and it is very important to do on your Ubuntu system. The next important thing to do on your Ubuntu system is to install the Synaptic Package Manager. The Synaptic Package Manager is a graphical tool for APT Package Manager. It does not come pre-installed. So in order to install it, you have to write on your terminal sudo apt install synaptic and hit enter. Press Y here to continue installing the synaptic package manager and hit enter. All right, so the synaptic package manager is successfully installed. Click on your application menu and search here for synaptic. This is the Synaptic application, click on it, enter your password for the authentication and hit enter. All right, so this is the dashboard screen of Synaptic Package Manager. You can search for the APT packages by clicking on the search icon. After that, you have to write the name of the package here and all the packages will be listed here. And similarly, you can get the information of multiple packages by using the Synaptic Package Manager. It is such a useful application that you must have it in your Ubuntu system. Now let's move on to the next important thing that is install your favorite browser on Ubuntu system. Mozilla Firefox is the default web browser of Ubuntu and it comes pre-installed. But you can also install your favorite browser in Ubuntu. For instance, I like Google Chrome. So to install Google Chrome, you have to first open the Mozilla Firefox and you have to search here download Google Chrome. All right, so now you have to click on the link. It has automatically detected my operating system. So now in order to download the Google Chrome, I have to click on this download Chrome button and I am using Ubuntu 64-bit operating system. So I have to select this option. Then I have to accept the condition of the Google and the Debian package will be downloaded in the downloads directory. Once the Debian package is downloaded in the downloads directory, you simply have to navigate to the downloads directory with the command cd downloads. And then in order to install Google Chrome, you have to write here on the terminal sudo apt install put full stop backslash and now you have to write the name of downloaded Debian package. When you will hit enter, the Google Chrome or any of your favorite browser will be installed in your Ubuntu system. Now let's move on to our next important thing to discuss that is install VLC media player. VLC is a popular media player which is used to play any type of media files and it is the most reliable one. If you want to listen to music on your Ubuntu system and you want to watch the videos, 
then it is recommended to install the VLC media player. We can install the VLC media player on our Ubuntu system through the Snap application manager. Snap is a universal application manager for the Linux based distributions and it comes pre installed on Ubuntu 20.04. Let me just clear the terminal and in order to install VLC, you have to write on your terminal sudo snap install VLC. It will take a couple of minutes and it will be installed on your Ubuntu system. Alright, the VLC media player is successfully installed on Ubuntu system. Now let's move on to our next important thing that is to improve battery performance by installing TLP Linux. Maybe you have noticed that Ubuntu consumes more battery as compared to Windows. The battery consumption is a hardware specific thing. TLP is a great command line tool which improves the battery performance for your laptop. This tool comes with automatic background tasks that can help you get the most out of your battery. To install TLP on your Ubuntu system, you have to write on your terminal sudo apt install tlp tlp rdw. Alright, the TLP is successfully installed and now you have to enable its service so that it runs in the background and optimize the battery performance. To enable the service, write on your terminal sudo systemctl enable tlp. Alright, the service is enabled successfully. Now let's move on to the next thing that is exploring the Ubuntu Software Center. Ubuntu Software Center is a really useful application that is available on Ubuntu. It helps us to install the softwares and applications very easily on our Ubuntu system. This is the Ubuntu Software Center application. Simply you have to click on it. This is the Ubuntu Software Center application dashboard screen. Here you can see that you have multiple applications available here in the editor pick. You have the popular applications for Ubuntu. And similarly, you have multiple categories available here. For example, if you want to install Telegram desktop application, you simply have to select the Telegram application. And now you have to click on the install button. You have to enter your password for the authentication. Once you have entered the correct password, the installation will start automatically. So that was all about uh, using the Ubuntu Software Center application. And now let's move on to our next point that is setting the default application. If you double click on any file, then it will be opened in the default application. For example, if you double click on .mp3 file, then it will be opened in rhythm box in Ubuntu because it is the default music player in Ubuntu. Similarly, the photo will be opened in image viewer. We can set the default applications in Ubuntu. To set the default application, open the application menu and uh, search here for settings application. All right, this is the settings application. Click on it. Scroll down a little bit and here you can see the option for the default applications. You can set the default applications for web, mail, calendar, music, video and photos. For example, if you want to change the music and you want to set the default music player VLC media player, then you have to select it from the list. And now the VLC media player is the default music player for your Ubuntu system. And similarly, if you have multiple web browsers here and you will click on this list, you will find the multiple browsers. You have to select any browser and it will be your default application. All right, now let's move on to our next important thing to do on Ubuntu after installation and that is set up keyboard shortcut. You can set up keyboard shortcuts for like playing next song, opening up a specific directory and for opening up a specific folder. So in order to set the keyboard shortcuts, you have to go to the settings application and uh, you can see that we have the keyboard shortcut option here. So here you can see that I can set the keyboard shortcut for the home folder. I can set the keyboard shortcut for launching the calculator, email client, help browser, terminal, web browser, search. I can also set the keyboard shortcut for the navigation. Let me just show you how to set up the keyboard shortcut. So if you want to set up the keyboard shortcut for the home folder, you have to click here after that you have to press Control shift and now you have to press any key for example H so now shift Control plus H 
is my home folder shortcut key. Now I have to click on set. Let me just close this settings application. And if I press here, control shift H. All right, so you can see that the home folder is opened here. So that's it for this video. In this video, we have discussed the 15 things you must do after installing Ubuntu. If you really like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to tell us about this video and if you want to give us the feedback, then you can do so by writing in the comment section. If you are new to our channel, then don't forget to subscribe it. See you in the next video. Thank you.